Now join us as we voyage to the waters of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and search for wreckage and answers to the loss of two of the most magnificent machines ever to grace the skies, the United States airships Akron and Macon. Uh, sir, uh, this is uh, Pete Capilotti calling from Penn State University. Yes, Pete. Uh, I just returned from a, a trip on the, uh, the the U.S. Navy's nuclear submarine, the uh, the NR-1. Right. And uh, we were searching for the wreck, uh, the wreckage of the uh, the USS Akron. And we have some sonar of what we think is the tail section of the Akron. In fact, we tried to call you from the sub to to see what you had seen in the 1980s when you found the wreckage. We saw very little in the, in the line of wreckage, just some bits and pieces that we thought was aluminum. The only thing we stumbled on was the galley stone. We uh, made scratches of it in that dimensions and sent them to the, um, is it the museum there at Lakehurst. We didn't get a chance because of the water conditions just to get any kind of visual confirmation. We weren't able to put divers in the water. What I'm thinking is, is, is if there's any chance that you and your team of divers might want to go back out and revisit Akron and uh, look at the actual site from the, the remote sensing that we have from the submarine crews. Yeah, I think it's very possible. We can, we can plan an expedition to go out and, and actually see what there is to be seen. On the evening of April 3rd, 1933, flying out of Lakehurst on a routine training flight, Akron encountered violent weather. Hit by a severe downdraft, her captain and crew struggled to gain altitude. The airship's nose pitched upwards, driving her stern into the sea. Akron's crew desperately tried to drive her aloft and out of danger. Even with her engines straining at full, Akron was unable to break free of the water's grasp. The airship stalled and plunged into the ocean. Almost all life rafts and jackets had been removed for a transcontinental voyage that had never been replaced. Doomed, the Akron began to break up and found a dark, watery grave. Of the 76 men aboard, only three survived. Among the dead was Admiral William Moffat, the champion of the airship program who had been close to retirement. The Akron tragedy had occurred in dark, trying times. With America in the throes of the Great Depression, many questioned the need for this costly program. But Japan, now with one of the world's largest navies and growing military might, was identified as a possible hostile threat to the United States. With radar yet to be implemented, it was vital that America be forewarned of sudden attack or rapid buildup of sea-based hostile forces. It was suggested that airships with their excellent reconnaissance ability could form an early warning system. Both these ships were designed to carry up to five aircraft which could be launched and recovered in mid-air. It was hoped these massive lighter-than aircraft with rigid frames and multiple engines could patrol vast areas of ocean and become the Navy's eye in the sky. 